This section is about inference about two means with dependent samples. So this is what's called hypothesis testing with matched pairs. To remind ourselves, what does it mean for two things to be dependent on each other? It means that an individual in one sample is related to an individual in another sample in some sort of way. Examples of matched pairs could be something like comparing two spouses together or even like parents and children. You can have the height of one parent and the height of their adult offspring. And you can see if there's any significant difference between those two heights, right? Um, another example of matched pairs could be that uh, we can actually have two samples, but all from the same person. For example, let's say there is some sort of weight loss program where you're tracking the weight loss of a before and after situation. So in that case, we're dealing with the same person, we're recording their initial weight, and then sometime later we record their final weight. And we can come up with their difference between those two weights. And what you'll notice in each one of these examples is that the sample size from both samples have to be exactly the same because we have to take a difference between those two. So that's what we actually analyze. We always analyze the differences. So for example here, if we have our first sample, we'll call that the x values, you'll have one subject here, second subject, third subject, dot, 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 all the way to the nth subject, so x sub n. And then the same thing for y, y1, y2, y3, dot, 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 yn. And if we calculate the differences, which is defined by, in this particular case, x minus y, then we get the first difference, which is d1, which is x1 minus y1, d2, x2 minus y2, d3, which is x3 minus y3, dot, 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 all the way to the nth difference, which would be xn minus yn. And we're going to be essentially analyzing just these d values here. So we do inference, that's confidence intervals and hypothesis testing on the differences, the Ds. If that's the list that we're actually interested in, the D list, the difference list, then we can come up with the sample mean of the difference. And we'll call that D bar, which would just be D1 plus D2 plus D3 plus dot, 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 plus the nth D all over. Well, in this case, there's N terms, so that has to be divided by N. Now, we actually have n from the x list and n from the y list. So you might be saying, well, isn't there two times n? For example, if we had 10 values from the x list and 10 values from the y list, you would have 20, right? But we're, again, we're analyzing just the differences. So there's still 10 differences in that case. So this n value represents the number of pairs. So you might have 20 data values, right? But when you take the difference between those dependent values from each sample, you get only 10 values in that case. Of course, that's just an example. So if you can calculate the mean, right, the mean, the sample mean, we can also calculate the sample standard deviation of differences. And of course, there, we can just call it S sub D. And of course, there's a formula for that. It's done the exact same way as before. Now, when we run our differences list in our calculator, we're going to use one bar stats. And of course, the outputs for one bar stats, they always give you something like x bar and sx. And since we're dealing with differences, this is going to be the same thing as d bar. And that, of course, is going to be the same thing as s sub d. Now, there's always a theoretical true difference between x and y. And this sample mean of d bar is always trying to target the true difference. And we're going to call that the population mean difference. And as usual, we use Greek letters for population parameters uh, when possible. And that's going to be mu sub d. And of course, that's a parameter here. All right, so if we're doing hypothesis testing only on this difference list, then we can already start talking about the six steps here. Okay, let's go through the requirements. To test hypothesis regarding the mean difference of matched pair data, which is what we have here, the following must be satisfied. The sample is obtained using simple random sampling. That's a common requirement. Sample data are dependent, right, or matched pairs. Uh, the differences are normally distributed with no outliers or the sample size n is large. 
So if your number of pairs is greater than 30, then we don't have to know the distribution of the population. All right, so let's go into step one. So remember that the null hypothesis here is always a statement of status quo or that there is no difference. Again, you're dealing with D, which is just the difference between your two samples, X and Y. And we always state that the difference is nothing, right? We're saying that the difference actually is assumed to be zero, that there's no difference between X and Y. And so that's what we mean by mu sub D is equal to zero. It literally means there is no difference between, um, for example, that weight loss program that we're testing, that your weight loss before and after is exactly the same, the difference being zero. That would be that example. And the alternative, of course, challenges the null hypothesis. In this case, this is kind of weird wording here, but we say that the difference is non-zero, meaning that is there is some sort of difference. So the wording there is a little tricky there, okay? So this, we say that the mean difference is not zero. So if you say that in any situation, uh, the amount of money you have in your bank account is non-zero. That means you have money in your bank account, right? So that's the same idea here. Being non-zero could be a positive number or non-zero could be a negative number, right? Same idea here. The mean difference is less than zero. So the mean difference is negative or the mean difference is positive. Okay, so the wording there can be a little tricky. You just have to read through that carefully. Uh, step two is our significance level. That's given to you in the question. Uh, our test step. Again, now that we're only analyzing one specific list, which is just the differences, it makes our process much easier. In fact, it turned essentially what we thought was two populations into really just one population. Now recall that in the previous chapter, when we were just doing a hypothesis on a mean, we dealt with the t-test, right? And that was just t equals x bar minus mu over s over square root of n. That's essentially what we have here, okay? Again, we have, instead of x bar, we have d bar. Instead of mu, well, what's our mu right here? What's our mu dif mean difference? Well, from the null hypothesis, that comes from the null hypothesis, right? And in the null hypothesis, it's zero. So that's why it's missing there, because we don't need it there, it's just zero. And then the denominator of the standard deviation is just the standard deviation of the differences divided by the square root of n. So it's the same idea as before. And of course, we're gonna use the t-test here, just like we did in the previous chapter. Now, very often, they don't give you summary statistics for these types of problems. They actually give you two different lists and you actually have to calculate the differences manually. Now in these instructions, you can put your X list into L1 and your Y list into L2. And this does show you that you can actually define L3 to be the differences. But in my experience, it's much easier just to take the differences on paper and then just insert those differences into L1 or whatever list you wanna put them in, okay? It's up to you, whatever you wanna do. Now step four, we're gonna draw a picture. Again, this is a T distribution, so it's gonna be a bell shape. And we're gonna use a T test for this. It's gonna give us a test step from step three and also it's gonna give us the P value. And of course, here are the instructions. Again, if you have your raw data into L1 and L2, then you can calculate L3 in that way. But again, my suggestion is just calculate the differences between your X and Y and then just create a difference list and just put that single list into your calculator. And I'll show you how I do it uh, when we go through this example. Step five is the same as before, make our decision based on the p-value and your significance level. And then step six, we're gonna go ahead and answer the question of interest in the context of the problem. All right, let's go ahead and do a problem. All right, example one. The following data represent the cost of a one night in Hampton Inn Hotels and La Quinta Inn Hotels for a random sample of 10 cities. Tests the claim that Hampton Inn Hotels are priced differently than La Quinta Inn Hotels at a 5% level of significance. So let's go ahead and highlight our claim statement here. It says Tests the claim that Hampton Inn Hotels are priced differently than La Quinta Inn Hotels. Okay. I don't really like that claim statement because it's not a very sure claim statement. They didn't really say anything about 
if one is greater than the other. They just said priced differently. So that can be that Hampton Inn hotels are less or greater than. So it's not a very specific claim. But diff the word differently does suggest something. Okay, and we'll talk about that once we get into step one. So what we have here is your La Quinta Inn hotels and your Hampton Inn hotels. And then you have different cities. Now they're suggesting that the price in one hotel has some sort of dependency with the price of the other hotel just because they're in the same city. So there's probably some sort of competition there, right? If you price your hotel at a certain price, don't you see how that can affect competition? Another hotel might want to price it lower just to get more customers. Uh, so there can be a little bit of dependency there. You see that they're not completely independent. So that's the idea behind this. The prices at these two hotels per city is dependent on each other. Okay, let's go down the conditions list. Uh, are these random samples? Well, yes, random 10 cities. Okay, so yeah. Are these matched pairs? Uh, just like I mentioned earlier, yeah, they are matched pairs because they're in the same market. Uh, are they normally distributed? Well, it doesn't really tell us that they are, but let's just assume that they are in order to proceed with the problem. Okay, so we're going to be focusing on the differences here. So let's go ahead and create a difference column here. Now, in this case, well, let me, before I do that, because it, it does sometimes help to know what the null hypothesis statement and alternative hypothesis statements are before taking the difference, because it might affect the way you want to take the difference. You might want to do the first one minus the second one or the second one minus the first one. And let's just see in our problem what we have. Step one, null hypothesis versus the alternative. We are dealing with matched pairs, so it's gonna be mu sub d. And we always assume that there is no difference between these two prices of these two hotels. So we say that the mean difference is zero. That the same as, that they're exactly the same, which is the same as saying that the difference is zero. And what does the claim statement that's highlighted above suggest? Well, that they're actually priced differently, that the price of one is not the same as the other, but they didn't suggest that one is greater than the other. They just said that they're priced differently, okay? So what they're saying is mu sub d is just not equal to zero, that they're not the same, okay? So that actually lines up with the claim statement. If it's a not equal to zero, it really doesn't matter how we take the difference here, as long as you're consistent about it. So I'm just gonna take the difference uh, left minus the right one. And if I take the difference, I'm just gonna list it out right here. And then I'm gonna insert this list into my calculator. I'll put this under L1. Okay, so here I have all the differences. I did Hampton Inn minus La Quinta Inn. And just by the looks of this, I noticed that the Hampton Inn hotels are priced almost always above the La Quinta Inn hotels, and usually by quite a lot, okay? Um, just by the looks of it, I can already tell that there is a significant difference between these two hotels, just by the looks of this. And why do I say that? Because there's an overwhelming amount of positive numbers that are pretty far away from zero, at least on average. Again, once you actually run the test and you actually analyze the spread of this data, then you can actually make that determination if you actually see a bunch of positive numbers or an equal number of positive numbers and also equal number of negative numbers, uh, like in this case, there was only one city in which La Quinta was actually priced more than the Hampton Inn hotels. But if there was more instances like that, then there might be on average, this difference might actually be close to zero and suggesting that there probably is no difference. But let's go ahead and run this through our test here. Uh, step two is our significance level. Step three is our test stat. Now again, for matched pairs, it's just gonna be a simple t-test, which is d bar over sample standard deviation of the differences over the square root of n. And of course we have data here. And what we're gonna go ahead and do, once we run this through our calculator, we're gonna just record what d bar was, sd was, and what n is. Well, n we can already just count, right? Uh, it's just the number of pairs or the number of differences that we see here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right, there's, there's 10 here because there's 10 cities. Uh, let's run this through our calculator under t-test. And we're gonna go ahead and put in the differences into L1. Here I am at the home screen, it's cleared out. 
Let's go ahead and put in this difference list into our calculator. Let's go to edit. And let's just type away. Okay, I put in the data and I'm now checking. Uh, one thing to note is uh, I do see this common mistake for that negative 10. Make sure you're using the negative symbol, which is right below the three as a button. It's in parentheses there. Uh, and not the subtraction symbol. Always use a negative symbol for these. Okay, once you've checked your data, let's go ahead and quit out of this. Let's go to stat. Let's go to test. I'm going to do t-test because we're just dealing with one list. Uh, we do have data. The null hypothesis is that the difference is zero. So we have to just put zero for that. Where's our list in? I put my list in L1, so it's L1 already. Frequency, just keep that at one. Okay, and the alternative, well, our alternative is that it's not equal to zero. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that that one's highlighted by pressing enter. Now it's highlighted. And let's go ahead and calculate this. All right, it gives us our test set of 5.27. And then the p-value, notice that's a, a whole number there. That tells you to immediately look to the right because you know it's gonna be in scientific notation. So this is a small probability. So we know we're gonna reject the null hypothesis that the difference is zero. Because of course we did see that the Hampton Inn hotels were priced much more than the Lakita Inn hotels, almost overwhelmingly. So, and of course it gives us other statistics here. They calculate the mean difference, $51. That just says on average, Hampton Inn hotels were $51. Dollars and forty cents more than La Quinta Inn hotels it gives us a standard deviation. That's a measure of spread, and there were ten samples here or ten differences here. Okay, that's our test out of five point two seven, and then let's just list out the outputs for the mean and the standard deviation. These were outputs from calculator. All right, that's a complete step three. Also from that output, we have the p-value. That's the probability of committing a type one error. In our case, that was. 5.13 times 10 to the negative 4. If you want a decimal equivalent to that, that means there's going to be a three zeros in front. Okay, so that's the probability of committing a type 1 error if we reject the null hypothesis. Uh, for t distributions, we have a bell shape, zero at the center. Our test set is 5.27. What kind of tail test is this? Is it a right tail, left tail, or two tail? Well, in our case, it's a two tail because it's a not equal to. Okay, and why is that? Because they weren't very specific in their claim. They just said that the difference is non-zero. It's that these two uh, hotels are priced differently. So that just makes it a little bit harder to pass the test, right? Because it wasn't a very strong claim. So we have to also have a negative 5.27. And what's the area of these two tails? Well, it's the total sum is the p-value, okay? Half of that p-value is in both tails here. All that's really saying, if that's kind of confusing, is that we could have rejected the null hypothesis if it was significantly larger than zero, right? Or more to the right of zero, or significantly more to the left of zero, okay? In this particular case, it was significantly more to the right of zero, but it could have also been rejected if it was significantly to the left of zero. Step five, we're gonna make a decision. And your decision is made by comparing your p-value to your significance level in step two. Uh, the significance level was 5%. P-value was 5.13 times 10 to the negative four. And this p-value is definitely less than your significance level. So we are gonna reject the null hypothesis. Again, the probability of committing a type one error is very small, so we're okay with taking that chance. So we're gonna reject the null hypothesis. Our conclusion statement well, we rejected the null hypothesis. Our claim was the alternative. So in a way, the alternative is, in quotes, true. So there was evidence to support our claim. Of course, if you go through that flow chart again, well, the claim was the alternative. So we go this way. And did we reject the null hypothesis in step five? Yes. So the sample data supports the claim that, and in our case, that Hampton Inn hotels are priced differently than La Quinta Inn hotels. All right, so we can also come up with a confidence interval for the mean difference of match paired data. And again, since we're just dealing with the difference list, it's almost as if we just have 
one population to deal with, right? And to find confidence intervals for one population mean, we're just going to be using t interval. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, so example two, construct a 90% confidence interval for the mean difference in price of Hampton Inn hotels versus La Quinta Inn hotels. So it's using the same data list as the previous example. And let's go ahead and do that on the calculator. All right, from a clear home screen, we're going to go to stat, we're going to go to test, and we're just going to go to T interval, should be the eighth one here. Uh, we do have data. Our data should still be in L1. And the confidence level that we're interested in is what? 90%, so 0.9. Yeah, let's go ahead and calculate. All right, so we have 33.526, 69.274. Uh, the context of this problem, we're talking about dollars here. So we are 90% confident that the difference between Hampton Inn Hotels and La Quinta Inn Hotels is somewhere between $33.53 and $69.27 when rounding. Okay. All right, so we can say that we are 90% confident that the mean difference in price of Hampton Inn versus La Quinta is between $33.53 and $69.27. And you notice that zero is not in that interval. So we are pretty sure that the difference is a non-zero value. It's somewhere between $33.53 and $69.27. Okay, thanks for watching.